Falcon Heavy is in startup. Good call out that the Falcon Heavy is in startup. Now we're going to get the go at T minus 45 seconds. Go for launch. We are go for launch. All systems are go to send the Psyche spacecraft to deep space. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. And here we go with the final seconds of launch. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, engine ignition. And lift off. Lift off of Falcon Heavy and Psyche on a mission to a metal asteroid in deep space to study the building blocks of our planet's inner space. Vehicles pitching down range. M1D chamber pressure is nominal. View there from the onboard camera on the booster. Beautiful shot there as it goes through the clouds. Telemetry nominal. Here we hear Joe, the power telemetry are nominal. We're also looking at the data for all 27 engines. And Falcon is all supersonic. All chamber pressures look good, and Falcon is supersonic now. Throttling down in preparation for max Q. A moment of peak mechanical stress on the rocket. What will happen here max is Q. the side boosters will. Uh, be at full power and the center core will be at a reduced power to go through max Q to reduce the pressures on the structure of the launch vehicle. Coming up in 30 seconds. We'll start getting ready to have those boosters cut off. Vehicle's looking good, pitching down range. They're all telemetry looks really good so far, Daryl. As we see a beautiful view of uh, the Falcon Heavy and uh, center core and side boosters there. Data is looking really good. All 27 engines of the Falcon Heavy putting down 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Standing by now for booster engine cutoff for those side boosters. The center core booster will continue on. Booster engine cut off. Side booster separation confirmed. Great shot there, the side boosters Three coming off the rocket. MVAC engine chill has started. And there we start the chill on stage two as we get ready for uh, Miko on the center core. Three stage stage two will continue uh, chilling down, making sure the fuel and propellants are flowing through that MVAC, getting ready for ignition. Those boosters will have three burns, two re-entry burns, and one final landing burn before it comes back down at LZ-1 and LZ-2, landing zone 1 and 2 here at the Cape. Next up is main engine cutoff of that center booster. After that cuts off, there'll be a series of steps that will happen in close succession. Main engine cutoff, the center core stage will separate, and then we'll start the second stage burn, the first of two burns today. There we see a shot inside the... Uh, there we, that was a uh, shutdown. Looking Main now engine inside cutoff. the booster... 
There you have Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And there it goes. You're looking at the second stage in front of you, lighting up its back, back engine. Split screen now on your right hand Next side. Center core oh. FTS is saved. Bermuda. Calling out the communication stations. What a beautiful shot there while we had it of stage two. Darrell, we continue to look at the side boosters. Bearing separation boost back, confirmed. Boost back uh, has been completed and they're an extended coast right now. And there go the fairings. Revealing Psyche to the atmosphere. You can see the fairing falling away back to Earth. SpaceX has their recovery vessel. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. Their recovery vessel, Bob, is out in the waters right now looking to recover both of them. Getting a good burn now from the second stage. This lasts about four minutes. We are going out over the Atlantic Ocean, heading south towards southern Africa. On the right-hand side, you see the glowing engine of the Stage 2. We've got two cameras there. On the left, we're tracking those boosters coming back down. Yeah, we should see in about uh, 20 seconds, we should see the uh, booster, booster entry burn, uh, which is be the one engine on both side boosters. Quite a clear image in space on the right-hand side. We've got clouds overhead on the left, but you can see at the center, we're tracking one of those boosters. Also tracking the second stage, it looks like right there. Yeah, all, all the data so far, uh, telemetry is looking nominal. Um, I see the telemetry uh, chilling down the engines for that uh, <coughs> booster entry burn on the side boosters uh, starting up in the telemetry. Everything's looking nominal. The vehicle second stage is performing very well and side boosters are uh, coming back. Boosters entry burn start up. And there we just heard booster uh, entry burn startup is happening. And seeing the entry burn getting ready to go on the side boosters. Boosters entry burn shut down. And there we saw the booster entry burn on one and shut down. And there we see booster entry burn on the second side booster and shut down. Next burn is the final landing burn. And for PY, folks. NY, FTS is saved. And for folks who are in the area, you end up hearing that loud sonic boom, that thunderclap, just about the time they make landing. Stage two is on a nominal trajectory. You and I here at Hangar AE, just a couple of miles away from this landing zone, we certainly hear it and feel it. Yep, and I see now that the booster side boosters are supersonic, transitioning to transonic. And that's a shot of the booster through a thin layer of clouds. We hear the call out for transonic. <laughs> Landing burn is started. Here it comes. I don't know, Daryl, but that, uh, that sonic boom was great for us. I'm sure Jim is excited over there. There's the second one. I'm sure the host desk over there is feeling that really well. Literally, our monitors were shaking as yep. those, both those boosters broke the sound barrier. And we just heard booster landing confirmed, as we see on the screen, both uh, back landing zone one and two. Everything looks great. And then the call out for stage two FTS is safe. Seco one, stage two engine cutoff. 
So Daryl, this will put us into that 45 minute coast that you and Jarmaine were talking about, allowing us to uh, do Nominal that barbecue park roll. Insertion. Absolutely, we're looking forward to that. And as you look at your screen there, there are the two side boosters on their landing pads, coming down more staggered than I'd seen them before, but nonetheless, perfect landings for them both. And now we will continue to track this right here, the second stage of the Falcon Heavy, along with the Psyche spacecraft right there looking forward. You can see the spacecraft on the right-hand side. It will be coasting now for about 45 minutes. And when we come back, we will bring you the moment of separation. In the meantime, we'll send it back to Megan and Jim at the host desk. And if you're just joining us, welcome live to Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where we just saw a Falcon Heavy rocket launch off with Psyche, the spacecraft. Jim, speechless. Speechless. Actually, you weren't speechless during the launch <laughs> because you were standing next to me, and he just kept on saying, go, baby, go! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so powerful, yeah. so incredible. Just, you know, the, the light, the sound, the you know, you felt it in your yeah. bones, oh, just yeah. shaking us as this thing goes up. I saw what the range day. of emotions, like you were super excited, and then you got quiet. You got really quiet. Well, you know, there's a lot riding on this for the whole team, right? For all the yeah. hundreds and thousands of people that have been involved with this. And it's just, what a great ride so far. Yeah, how yeah. did you feel also hearing and feeling those sonic yeah. booms? I was boom, kind of worried, because yeah. we saw it in the video, and we were like, are we going to feel it here? And all of a sudden, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Yeah, 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 that was very <laughs> exciting, very exciting. So, and it's just, uh, just great job landing those boosters because we want to reuse them for Clipper next year. Yeah. yeah. Anything you want to say to the team, again, as we just saw at liftoff, you said all that hard work, all that time. Yeah. No, this is just, uh, it is a team effort. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be collecting this data set and studying this planetary core for future generations. Yeah. Really, It's going to be spectacular. Uh, data images, chemical data, magnet field data, gravity data. And really, you know, we can't study the Earth's core any other way. So here's... Here's maybe how cores grow and how what's happening inside our own planet. Yeah. So Effective the Psyche mission is going to explore the metal-rich asteroid, also named Psyche. And why don't we take a closer look at Psyche now? It was first discovered in 1852. We don't know exactly uh, what the asteroid looks like, but scientists have combined radar and optical observations to generate this 3D model you're looking at right now. Shaped like a potato, at its widest length, it's 173 miles. That's about the same as driving from Houston to Austin, Texas. There's evidence of two crater-like depressions. It appears to have a significant amount of metal. And a day on Psyche lasts only about four Earth hours. So as Psyche's imaging lead, tell me, when can we expect the first photos? We are have to spend, once we complete the deployment, we have to spend many months just checking out the systems, propulsion system, communication system, computer system, everything, right? Commun communications. Uh, and we'll, part of that is checking out the instruments. So I think the magnetometer might get checked out first because they're trying to detect some of Earth's magnetic field before we get too far away. Uh, and then in the weeks after that, we'll be testing out the imagers, uh, taking pictures of stars, calibrating the cameras, getting the geometric correction just right, uh, and getting ready for our eventual flyby of Mars, where we'll get lots of more great pictures as we pass by Mars. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, uh, we'll, we'll start seeing Psyche as we get close to uh, the end of this decade in late 28, early 29. Uh, it'll go from that point of light that we can see in telescopes to its own little world. Yeah, the fact that right now it's so far away, again, orbiting uh, the Earth between Mars and Jupiter, three times farther from the sun than Earth is, to be able to study it now up close that's amazing. It's very exciting, right? Yeah. And the fact that we're going so far out to learn more about our home planet, I think that's yeah. so fascinating. It is, and I love the fact that, you know, this is something we're going to share with the whole world, right? With this, it's a point of light in the sky right now, but we're going to see it become a world as it gets bigger and bigger in the windshield as we get closer. Perfect. Now, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California is managing this mission. I also hear you're managing a very excited crowd right there. Thanks, Megan. Yes, back here at JPL, there was so much excitement, clapping, cheering, high fives. And just take a live look from inside Von Karman Auditorium. We invited friends and family to come here today and watch the launch together. They're taking some photos right now. And when the launch happened, the whole room started clapping and cheering, and they are wearing their Psyche gear there. So Psyche may be off the ground, but its twin is still here on Earth. 
It will support testing on the spacecraft journey to a metal-rich asteroid. Psyche testbed engineer Joan Tubungbanwa joins us now to tell us about it. Thanks for joining us, Joan. Thanks, Raquel. So how would you describe Psyche's testing twin? Yeah, that's a great question. Psyche's testing twin is called the testbed, and it is located at our spacecraft assembly facility here at JPL, which is the same place where we built the Psyche spacecraft. Now, the testbed isn't something that you can just get from the mattress store, nor does it look like the spacecraft or a mattress. In fact, it's hardware that stays here. And if you look at the picture, it's connected by these snake-like wires that is designed to have the same software that the spacecraft is running with, which is also called its brain. Now, Joan, you are about to start your shift here in the mission support area. What will you be working on? Yeah, it's a super exciting time right now. The test bed is closely following behind the Psyche spacecraft as it progresses through the launch procedure. My shift begins when we first communicate to the spacecraft since liftoff, and this is done through something called commands. Now, commands are directions that we give to the spacecraft, which we tell it what to do and what kind of, informa of information that we need from it. The room will be making sure that the spacecraft is in a safe state, while the test beds are sending the same commands and simulating the same data that we would get from the spacecraft. If anyone in the team or in the room was curious about a specific command, we would first test it on the test bed to see that we get the expected response. Lots of work ahead. Now, Joan, you're not saying goodbye just yet. Tell us what's next. Yeah, so of course I'll be celebrating a successful launch with my family, who's actually in Von Karman Auditorium right now, came all the way from New Jersey. Um, October is also a special month because it is Filipino American History Month, and I was born in the Philippines, and so we'll be putting on an event that highlights both Psyche and our Filipino American team members. And lastly, I'll be following Jer following Psyche's journey, making sure that our test beds are operating alongside the spacecraft. Joan, thank you so much. I'm glad you were able to celebrate with your family. Megan, back to you. Filipino Joan. <laughs> <laughs> and we were happy to host JPL's director here at Kennedy for launch. She's with NASA's Jasmine Hopkins, and they had a great view of liftoff. Thank you, Megan. That is right. The crowd was so excited here on the balcony to see that beautiful liftoff of the Psyche launch. We are honored to be joined by Lori Leshen, director of JPL. So, Lori, this is a coast-to-coast -coast mission from JPL to Kennedy. How do you feel to be here for launch? So thrilling, so exciting to see that rocket light. There's nothing like it, and you see it, and then you feel it and then the emotions really start. Exactly, that was the perfect description of what we just saw. And there are a lot of emotions attached to this for you. The uh, team at JPL has been working on this for years. So what do you want to say to the team at JPL and your partners about today's launch? I am so incredibly proud of our team at JPL. I'm waving to all of you right now. I will say I was out at the launch pad a few days ago in the hangar with the rocket, it was laying down and I just took a few minutes away from the group to stand underneath the fairing and think about all the thousands of hands and minds and hearts that have gone into making Psyche possible at JPL, at all our partners, and I just couldn't be more thrilled to represent them. Exactly, and it's really like a relay race. You know, today's the beginning with launch, but you guys have six years before you get to Psyche, so yes. what is next? What's the work being done at JPL? So right now, it's all about picking up from the launch team and getting our spacecraft separated from the rocket, power positive, making checking out all the systems, and starting thrusting in just a few months to get us on out to Psyche, 2.2 billion kilometers away. Yeah. Exactly, a lot to look forward to. Thank you so much, Lori Leshen. Thank you. Of go course. Psyche. Yeah, go Psyche. Megan and Jim, back to you. The Psyche mission is a collaboration between NASA's JPL, as we just saw, Arizona State University, and NASA's Launch Services Program in Florida. Let's meet some of the other people who made this mission possible. At the end of the day, it's always a philosophical question, right, of why are we in this universe? Space just inspires everyone of different backgrounds, different nationalities. So I think it gives, in a sense, kind of hope for humanity. As human beings, if we're not exploring, then what are we doing? It's extremely difficult science and technology, but it's possible. My name is Luis Dominguez, and my job is to assemble all the different components for the Psyche spacecraft. I'm Julie Lee, and my job is to propel the Psyche spacecraft to a metal-rich asteroid. Hi, I'm Betty Noy. My name is Christina Hernandez. My name is Vina Shrikantamurthy, and I'm making sure that we built a spacecraft that's ready to explore a metal world. What's really exciting about Psyche being a metal-rich asteroid is we haven't yet had the opportunity 
to explore a planetary core. And that's what we actually think happened to Psyche. There is a theory that this metallic asteroid may be very closely related to the materials that made up the core of our own planet. It could have been the remnant of a planetary collision billions of years ago in our solar system. All that's left is the metal-rich remnant. Scientists hypothesize that by studying this asteroid. We think that can give us a lot more insights on what our actual planet is doing. So this is the Psyche spacecraft. We're basically looking at a spaceship that's going into space. And welcome to High Bay 2 at JPL. We pulled together all the different components that everyone's building. And so this is where we control the Psyche spacecraft. They dictate how things happen on the floor. This is where I work on the low voltage power supply for the Psyche mission. It's pretty exciting to watch something that we build with our own hands. This is something that you've spent years on. Launch and in a couple of years reach Psyche and send back science data. We formed a really, really critical team. The diversity of skill sets that each one of us in our community brought to the team to make this kind of impact to society is what inspires me to be an engineer in the space exploration sector. Now, Jim, we just heard from some of your colleagues. Tell me, what does it feel like for you to be part of this team? Oh my God, it's, it's such an amazing team, Megan. And you saw some examples there. It's scientists working with engineers, all kinds of engineers, yeah. all over mechanical, software, communications, propulsion, power, you know, every kind of engineering you can imagine. But it's also, we deal with, we're working with managers, administrators, communications experts, educators. I mean, it's just such an amazing collection of people, a community of people yeah. that it takes to make this kind of thing happen. And I know they're all just super excited right now. Yeah, and somebody said, you know, what inspires them? What inspired you to be a part of Psyche and, and to want to go into this field? You know, uh, I when I was a kid, uh, there were astronauts driving cars on the moon, on TV, and it's like, I want to do that, you know, and, uh, and I've always just been hooked on it, had a telescope when I was a kid, got to know the night sky, and just been really fortunate to be able to pursue all this as a career. Yeah, I can still feel how emotional this is for you. Are you okay? <laughs> We're back know, to excited. We're back to excited. <laughs> all right, it's now been about 20 minutes since launch. Let's go back to JPL and Raquel again for another update on the Psyche spacecraft. And Raquel, the mission support area is working in shifts, yeah? That's right, Megan. A team switched the spacecraft to internal power, and now that the spacecraft has launched, they'll pass the baton to a new team who will work to make the spacecraft fully operational. Joining us now is Psyche Systems Engineer, Christina Hoogstrom, who tested the spacecraft and can tell us what comes next. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, Raquel. So tell us what you'll be working on when you take over this workspace. So right now we're waiting for the launch vehicle to get into position to let go of Psyche. And after that point, we'll be monitoring closely and waiting for that first signal from the spacecraft. Once it separates from the launch vehicle, Psyche is gonna autonomously turn on its radios, deploy its solar rays, and then put itself into a slow spin at one revolution per hour. And that's to keep the temperatures uniform, which is why we call it rotisserie mode. Once it's in that spin, the antenna that's beaming the signal to Earth is going to be rotating in and out of our view. And so it could be anywhere from a couple minutes to a couple hours before we hear from the spacecraft. But as soon as we do, we'll look, from, look at the data, we'll make sure that it's still healthy, and then we'll start talking back to it. We'll command it to stop that spin, keep the antenna pointed at us, and then we will work to get it into its fully operational mode. And we heard from Joan that there is a testing twin on Earth, but you actually tested the spacecraft itself. What kind of tests did you do? Oh yeah, we really put the spacecraft through the ringer. I helped to coordinate this test where we put the entire thing in a giant vacuum chamber. We sucked all the air out to simulate deep space. And then for 17 days continuously, we made it super hot, we made it super cold, we made it hot again to make sure that the spacecraft could operate in those extremes of deep space. And then there was another test where we put it on a big table and we shook it to simulate the launch vibrations that it's seeing today. As much as we can over and over, we've checked every wire, we've tested every function on the real spacecraft as long as it's safe for the hardware. Anytime we have a brand new version of the software that's on board the spacecraft controlling it, we always test that in the testing twin first to make sure it works. And then we still prove it out on the real spacecraft. And the whole process is iterative. So we start on the testing twin, we test something, we learn something, we fix it, we test again, and then we move it to the real spacecraft 
left, we learn something, we fix it, and we start the process over. And that's why it takes us years to be absolutely sure that we're ready for today. Sounds like it is ready for its journey. Now, you've been with the mission for four years. Mm -hmm. What is happening next for you? Oh my goodness, it is surreal. Um, I, this is my first flight project and I've just learned so much. I've had the opportunity to have a lot of different kinds of jobs on Psyche, uh, from temperature regulation to fault protection, that's like autonomously detecting and correcting for problems. I even helped out with electric propulsion early on. And uh, nowadays I'm on the operations team as kind of a systems generalist. I've seen this thing grow up from designs on paper to a robot that's on its way to space today and I just am so super excited to continue on and fly this thing that we've worked so hard to build. The next 100 days are going to be pretty crazy for the operators. We're going to be checking things out, turning things on for the first time, making sure signal. that everything's Good going bone. swimmingly, and then we'll have a much more relaxing cruise to the asteroid and I just can't wait to see what we find when we get there. I'll be on this journey to a metal world every step of the way. Thank you, Christina. Back to you, Megan. Now we ask for questions and you've sent them in. Sent them in. Jim, yes. are you ready to answer? I am ready. Bring them on. <laughs> I wasn't ready to say that, but now I'm ready. <laughs> okay. So let's play the first question. I am Paola and I'm from Serrano Elementary School in Moreno Valley, California. And my question is, how much time is Psyche going to spend studying Psyche 16? It's a great question that Paula asks. And so first of all, it's gonna take us almost six years to get there, That's right. right? So we have to fly by Mars and slowly coast out, power ourselves out with those electric thrusters. And then when we get to Psyche, we'll start up high uh, in this 33 hour orbit and we'll spend a little more than two years, 26 months, mm -hmm. slowly getting closer to the surface and getting higher and higher resolution and map this whole thing and get its chemistry and magnetic field and all that kind of stuff. So about 26 months. Awesome. Great question, Paola. All right, let's take the second question now. How can an asteroid have enough mass and density to support a molten metallic core? That is an outstanding mm -hmm. question. And uh, the answer we think is that this asteroid was part of something much bigger, mm. right? And so that's, it had more gravity. And with that gravity comes internal heat, pressure, internal heat, and it's got radioactive elements inside of it as it was forming. And so it's really hot on the inside and it can get molten. And we think that the part we're seeing now is just what's left over after maybe a big impact, a grazing impact mm. knocked off the mantle and crust. We're gonna okay. test that hypothesis with the Psyche mission. Okay, let's squeeze in one more question. This All is right. Andy Zhang on H. How long did it take to research and develop this mission and the Psyche spacecraft? Well, it's the better part of 10 years. Yeah, you know, we wow. saw earlier in the show that, you know, it all started with some scribbles on a whiteboard and, you know, folks thinking ideas about how can we learn about planetary cores? Mm -hmm. How can we figure out how planets form? We can't study the Earth's core. Hey, let's go visit a metallic asteroid that might be the remnants of a core. And so that idea from sort of 10-ish years ago became a proposal, a pitch to NASA in a competition that, that we won. Uh, to, to mount a Discovery class mission. And uh, the spacecraft started getting built. We got selected in 2017, and in probably about 2018 or 19, we started building and testing the spacecraft. Mm -hmm. And here we are in 23, and it's off the ground. And you know what? I just realized I never said congratulations to you. Thank you. <laughs> the whole team. It's really, like I said, everybody's just ecstatic right now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great questions, guys. Keep them coming using hashtag AskNASA. But right now, I need you all to take out your phones or get ready to take a screen grab if you're watching us on your phone. We're going to pull up another QR code for you. And this one will take you to NASA's Eyes on the Solar System page. This is really cool. You can track the Psyche asteroid's current location along with other asteroids and comets, uh, comets in our solar system. And once the Psyche spacecraft is communicating back with us on Earth, then you can also track its location too.